Hey guys, you are welcome to my channel. I'm always excited to sit down and have one-on-one -on -one interactions with you. And today, I come your way with another story time. Okay? Story time, are you ready? Story time, are you ready? But before we get into the story time, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do well to subscribe, like and share. And also don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Yajamra. Let's hop into the story time. But before I hop into the story time, I just want you to watch this video. Welcome back from watching the video. So as you saw in the video, I can't walk flat on my toes. As a result of that, I always have to wear high heels to give me the balance I need. And wearing high heels comes with a lot of challenges, like severe waist pains and pain in my, uh, what's it called, under my foot. I think after the video too, I'll show you how my foot looks like because I've been working on my toes. I have a, a bump, a little bump underneath my toes, but that is just by the way. So because of the constant wearing of these high heels and the, um, and the effects associated with them, we really wanted to find a way to get my heels to tight the ground. And we decided contacting doctors within and outside the country in order to, for us to get solutions to my problem. So we started, we had to conduct a series of tests to find out what the problem actually was. And of, upon conducting this series of tests, it was realized that I have a shortened Achilles tendon. That's one of the reasons why my heels can't tie the ground. And also two other tests we were asked to conduct. Another identified problem I was having was scoliosis. So when we say scoliosis, for those who might not know, it's a curvature of the spinal cord. That means my spinal, my spine is not straight. I have a curved spinal cord. So after all these things were identified, the myopathy, that the disease of the muscle, the shortened Achilles tendon, and the scoliosis was identified the major challenge to conduct the surgery was the anesthesia they were going to give to me because this is a situation whereby i don't really have strong muscles they are weak and giving me an anesthesia can shut down my muscles completely and i might not be able to wake up so the doctors were deliberating how they were going to go about the surgery and they came to a conclusion that they must operate on me within 15 minutes because they didn't want to give me so much anesthesia that would jeopardize my muscles. And how was it going to be possible operating on me within 15 minutes? I actually had two surgeries. The first surgery was supposed to happen in April and then the second one in August. Finally, Amidst all these struggles and deliberations among the doctors, they decided to still wait for me and do their best to do it within the 15 minutes allocated time. But they planned to give me a, a local anesthesia. I think that's what it was. Um, I'm not so sure. I think it was ketamine. I was still young by then. I think it was in 2012. So I think it was ketamine. So let's talk about the surgery now. On the day of surgery, I really wanted to give up because I was scared. All these things, they were... <coughs> Sorry. So on the day of surgery, if I got crack, I would have run away. I was so scared. With all these things they had said and the concerns they were having with regards to the surgery, but I was still a minor, so my parents were the ones who signed the consent form and I was sent straight to the operating room. When they gave me the anesthesia, I think I was semi-conscious. Me, I, I was, it's like I was asleep, but I 
was still active. And for some reason, I could feel this part of my body, but the leg on which they were operating on, I couldn't feel it. And it was very uncomfortable. I don't know, I, I don't know if they had tied something around my thighs or something. I can't really explain it because I was half conscious and half unconscious. I don't know. But when they were talking, I could hear them. When they talk, I could hear them. <laughs> and one funny thing, during the surgery too, I used to talk plenty. I don't know if it was as a result of the anesthesia they had given me. I would be crying. I would be singing. When the doctors are even talking among themselves, I'll put my mouth into it. <laughs> and the doctors will be like, yeah, we are not talking to you. <laughs> And I'll be like, okay, doctor, I'm sorry. Like, I was passing all awkward and strange. I don't know what was happening. It was like I was high. <laughs> and I got to a point, I started mentioning my classmates' names. I mentioned, ah, making noise, talking on top of my voice. And the doctors told me, hey, yeah, if you don't stop mentioning names, you start mentioning your boyfriend's name. I said, doc, I don't have a boyfriend. <laughs> All this while I was still like unconscious, but I was actively conversing with them, singing, crying. Oh, Charlie, me and I don't understand. And it was really painful. So at the, I think at the point where I started crying was when the anesthesia was wearing off. I, I started experiencing excruciating pain. So when they realized the anesthesia was wearing off, and I think the 15 minutes had elapsed, they had to top up. And they were so concerned on what to do. Because this is a girl who is waking up from a surgery which is not yet done. And they were also scared to shut down my muscles. But all the same, they ended up topping up with the anesthesia for them to proceed with the surgery. And God being so good, everything went on very, very well. Yes. And also, that was in April, the first surgery. And then the second surgery was scheduled for um august so with that one when they realized how i suffered during the first surgery they decided to go with a, a general anesthesia to completely put me to sleep so that i wouldn't have to go through the struggle of feeling the pain and all that so they with this time around they decided to give me a, a, a small quantity of the general anesthesia because their fear was me waking up if they had to give me too much and i think that one was pretty cool I, I i didn't really suffer like the first one which i was actively when i say conscious or an unconscious i don't really know but for the second one i was fully asleep and i didn't talk plenty i didn't even i didn't talk plenty i just woke up and everything was successfully done and one thing about this surgery is that when the anesthesia wear off, oh my god, the pain, Eesh. it wasn't easy. But by the grace of God, everything was a success. I sailed through and then, yeah, living happily ever after. Even though my leg still was incorrected, even after the surgery, I still can't walk flat on my toes but all thanks to God anyways so what I want you to know from this little story time I'm sharing with you is that no matter what somebody might say about you or no matter what the fact might be the fact was I don't have strong muscles my muscles are weak the fact was that I should be operated on within 15 minutes else I wouldn't be able to wake up those were the facts doctors were really concerned about but it wasn't my reality once you put your trust in god the facts can be your reality no matter how bad the facts might be just trust in god and whatever you are wishing for will become a reality so that's my message for you today i hope you enjoyed this little story time if you did don't forget to give it a thumbs up and please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't enjoy this amazing family and community and you know what i love you guys so so much and i'll see you in my next video i love you guys Peace. subscribe to my youtube channel and also follow me on my instagram handle